are in the minority, but uh, our ideas have to get out there if we expect to live in a free country for very much longer. Schiff, uh, Freedom Watch gets a lot of emails, and a lot of uh, the, the theme of a lot of them is, uh, is, is the Chinese premier going to whisper into the president's ear, we don't want to buy any more of your bonds. Uh, we want to buy something with security. In other words, are the Chinese going to demand real estate or something to back up the loans that they're giving to the Treasury Department? Okay. I, I, I don't know ultimately what they're going to do. I think the best thing for China would be to simply stop buying our bonds, period. I mean, they don't, they don't need to demand anything. Uh, they just need to stop lending us money. We can't pay it back. I mean, a lot of people think that they're stuck, that they, they've loaned us so much money that they have no choice but to keep lending. But that's just not true. Because, sure, they've loaned us a trillion, but they buy about 50% of our bonds, which means if we're going to run a $2 trillion deficit this year, we've got China penciled in for a trillion of it. And who knows what we've got to pencil in for the year after that and the year after that. I mean, China could be staring at a problem that's 5 or $10 trillion. So it's better to bite the bullet now, take the loss on their trillion, spend those dollars now while they can, buy gold, buy other currencies, buy real assets, just get rid of them. They don't have to you know, beg the, the rest of the G20 for permission uh, to look for another reserve. They don't have to ask Washington's permission for anything. China calls the shots in this relationship, not us. You don't expect the President of the United States, Congressman Paul, to accept Peter Schiff's advice, do you? Not likely. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it What worries me is uh, I consider Obama as a very smart person, and yet always I want to try to give my opposition, the intellectual opposition, the benefit of the doubt and say they're well-intentioned. But if he's very, very intelligent, and uh, he's in the seat of power, but he doesn't seem to be receptive to our ideas, and he doesn't have Peter Schiff in his uh, administration, what are they up to? I think they honestly believe that world government is the way to go, and they do not understand nor care for you, you, the protection you know, I'm, of I'm personal against, liberty. I'm against all forms of bailouts. I'm against the U.S. government bailing out private companies, and I'm against foreign governments bailing out our government especially when we, we take the bailout money we get from China and we use it to bail out companies that should fail. We use it to expand the size of government. We use it to stimulate consumption. We're doing all the wrong things with the money that China is lending us. Everybody would be better off if the Chinese just walked away from this relationship. And In the short run, you know, it would hurt the U.S. because we'd have to come to grips with our problems. But it's better uh, to face our problems and sweep them under the rug. And Congressman Paul, isn't it? even worse than, than Peter Schiff has painted it? Doesn't our obligation to the Chinese government affect the manner in which we would pressure them with respect to human rights, the manner in which we would treat them when they taunt our military and international waters, the diplomacy that Secretary of State Clinton engages in? Doesn't she have to have foremost in her mind the need that these guys still have to buy our bonds? I better treat them yeah. nicely. No, no, I think they're in the driver's seat. Uh, and I do think they're in a, a bit of a bind. Uh, they do think that if they immediately quit buying any more bonds, it will hurt the dollar, and I think they stand to lose. But what happens when somebody else precipitates the crisis and they want to get out in a hurry? I think the end stages of a dollar or a currency crisis is, goes very, very rapidly. Just as our financial system collapsed rapidly, a dollar or any currency can collapse rather quickly. And it's built around this uh, foreign indebtedness. It is the current account deficit that continues to build our foreign debt and it cannot last. And that's one thing generally that liberal and conservative economists have agreed on over the years. So uh, I, I think they're in a bit of a bind, but I think it makes us tread softly as well. We are not going to be as persistent as we might be with other countries uh, with China. Congressman Ron Paul, always a pleasure. Until next Wednesday on Freedom Watch. Thanks very much, sir. Thank you. What happens if the Chinese stop buying our bonds? Uh, it's just what Peter said. And, and they're going to get to the point where they're going to cut their losses. And we're going to have a dollar crisis. Everyone knows it. And that's why, along with what Peter is saying, we're saying gold, go gold. Anybody hanging on to paper money, it's beyond me. Yes, the you government know, everybody wants to get out of the dollar after the Chinese do it. You've got to get rid of your dollars before the Chinese try to get out. And if you want to buy gold, don't wait until China is backing the R&D with gold. You want to buy it before. Does the, John Stossel pulled out a couple of dollar bills. I know you can't see them. I'm almost afraid to ask what they're worth. 
Um, uh, now I lost my train of thought as to what I was going to ask you, uh, uh, Stossel. I worry about these. I said to Steady Hoyer, what are these going to be worth after you spend all that money? He admitted they'll be worth less. Well, intrinsically, they're worth nothing right now. The only thing that gives them value is confidence. But the, the minute people understand uh, that we're going to print them until we run out of ink, there's going to be no confidence left. I mean, ultimately, what, 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 what stands behind them is what we can produce. America's ability to export, and we continue to undermine that. I mean, the politicians still don't understand what's going on. Look at this new stimulus for the automobile sales. They're trying to get Americans to buy more cars by giving them tax breaks. They don't understand we bought too many cars. We're in debt up to our eyeballs because of the cars we already bought. Americans need to save their money. They don't need to go into debt to buy more cars. This is insanity. Peter. But the government still doesn't understand what really grows the economy. We need to save money and produce stuff. And until we figure that out, you know, destroying our currency isn't going to solve our problems. It's just going to compound them. Peter Schiff, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week uh, on Freedom Watch. Doesn't the government have an interest in inflation so it can pay these debts back at cheaper dollars? Awesome. Sure. Let's spend money. I'll get the credit for giving money to the museum in my state, and we'll pay China back in cheaper dollars. Uh, Eric Bowling, my good buddy from the Fox Business Network, who has the next Strategy Room show that starts in about 45 seconds, joins us now as a way to tie our show into his. Underneath those, uh, those fingers of John Stossel is American currency. Mm. Is it going to best be, in the world? Is it going to be the best in the world Forever. after after the G20? Forever, after the G20 doesn't finishes? Matter. Absolutely doesn't matter, Judge. You know why? If you think it stinks here, it stinks worse over there. Take a look around the world. What's going on? China has to back the dollar. They they own a trillion dollars in, uh, of of currency and securities. They have no choice. They need the dollar. But to stay don't strong. they want the yen or something no. else to be the international standard instead of the dollar? Boy, they better hope not. No, this is the most stable government, the most stable economy. Believe it or not, it is, and, and that's where exactly where you want your international currency to reside in the U.S. dollar. Bowling, this camera, this table, and this room are yours, handsome one. Judge, Thanks you for are us. the man. I'm proud to follow you, sir. Thank you, Stossel. And John Stossel. Yeah, John Stossel, always a pleasure. Yeah. Jerry Salenti, thanks for joining us. We hope you'll uh, come back. Mr. Doom and Gloom. Ah, come on. Come Until on. next Wednesday at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock on the West Coast, stay free. Thank you, guys. Right. Pleasure. Hey, thank you. Good to